Welcome back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, as you will see what's going on on our lovely island of Fawn Hollow today, where we'll be relaxing because it's a weekend, not just because I always say that line. Um, a little bit early in the morning when I usually record, but yeah, I just kind of felt like it, you know? It's sort of like, get it out of the way. Well, I say get it out of the way, it makes it sound like a chore. It's not a chore. It's just, I mean, how can it really be a chore? I'm not really doing anything. Um, it's just a weekend. It's actually a long weekend here in the UK where um, basically May the 1st is excuse me, a bank holiday. So, you know, most things like schools, most people are like, oh, I'm not working um, because it's a holiday for some reason. I think it's a traditional one, probably has like pagan roots or something. I don't really know. But anyway, good morning, everyone. All right now in Fawn it's 11.45 a.m. on Saturday, April 29th, 2023. Um, yeah, I guess I'll talk more about Mayday on the actual Mayday itself. I've probably spoken about it a lot, but here we are. We're just vibing, you know, it, it's almost the end of a month, which is weird to think about. Um, <laughs> it, it, I'm not sure this month, this is weird because I feel like this month didn't actually go that quickly, it feels like, compared to a lot of previous months. In my own personal um, opinion, you might be like, what on earth are you talking about? Um, Tom Nook, it's built on May 1st, May okay, we've got a special tour. Uh, I guess we'll um, do that on actual May Day itself. Uh, we've done that like a million times, I'm going to be honest, and by a million times I mean like four, but still, no, three. But this will be the fourth, I think. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about something, why not? Oh, I guess we could do more hot of a holiday chat. So, where, where have we gotten up to in uh, the follow holiday? But holiday photo album. Because genuinely, I don't really remember. <laughs> and the fact that <laughs> we're still going is sort of like <laughs> um, a testament to itself of how, how much yarn can be spun from a single spool of thread. Um, you might be like, how does that analogy work? I don't know. Don't, don't think about it too much. It probably works. Okay, so that's Gibraltar. Have we, have we spoken about that? Have we spoken about this? I don't remember. So you said some of the conversations we spoke about in previous episodes as well. So that makes it even more confusing. Alhambra? Have we talked about that? Have we talked about this calamari? <laughs> well, we must have talked about this. Like, yeah, I, I feel like I remember talking about us being in Granada, I think this was. And we had um, food here. I don't really remember. I need, I need to go look at my YouTube videos. And also, do I have one coming out today? <laughs> I, I do need to actually properly get started on making my next farm that arts, but um, apparently we have 458 subscribers, that's pretty cool. Um, I also need to respond to comments, I forgot about that. I always need to remember, Saturday morning, respond to, um, respond to these comments, you know. That's generally when I try to do it, but then if you if you ever find yourself being like, hey dear darling, you're kind of like um, responding on like Thursday or something, it's because I forgot for previous week almost certainly, so. <laughs> Let's see, what, what have we gotten up to? Town of Salem? Taste of veggies? Window dressing? I don't even know what on earth's going on here. Taste of vegetables? <laughs> well, I don't know why I'm talking about taste of vegetables necessarily, but uh, we, we can talk about this. So, well, when we went to, I, I think this is Granada, it's hard for me to remember. Alhambra's in Granada, right? Alhambra. In Granada, yes. Uh, we stayed off at like a, a lunchtime area. Um, of course, in Spain we, we, and Europe in general, actually, I feel like we tend to eat lunch a lot later than uh, it's conventionally safe for UK. Um, I might just be lying because I, at least I, I know there is a concept of siesta in Spain. I don't know how strictly it's adhered to, but uh, I, I believe a general idea is like some because of a, it gets really hot in like midday in, in these countries, unsurprisingly. Um, like from like 12 to 2 or something it's like extraordinarily hot so instead of like having to do stuff in that day like everyone just like takes a break or something you know wait till it's a cool down and stuff which is why you know i, I suppose as spanish days tend to go on a little bit longer it feels like because they, they take up those two hours from like night time and put it in the middle of the day um so there's not really many people or well, a lot of times when we go to restaurants and that sort of thing we're not really like either open or not busy at all at the time we go because you know we're from britain and the british conventional lunch time is about from 12 to 1 um at least that's how it's always been in school it's always how it's been like all over the place whenever you get lunchtime breaks um so we're always there probably like extraordinarily early i think compared to usual so we went to this restaurant i think we're literally the first people there like they were even just a bit like just open we were just like switching on you know like the grills or whatnot and it was very interesting. It wasn't that bad lunch. Uh, like I, I had a nice thing. Like I had like a, a brunchish sort of thing because I I probably had breakfast. I had breakfast most days, of comprising of like yogurt and a banana or something, um, which is actually genuinely a bit healthier than the breakfast I normally have at home. <laughs> Although, to be honest, really recently I've been having like oat cakes and Philadelphia cheese because I, I like that. It's, it's something that I was introduced to when I was much much younger, back in primary school, and I was like mm, delicious. Anyway. Um, 
so we were at this restaurant we were like literally the first people there it was very i suppose eerie in the sense that it was just completely empty and i can't even tell if a waiter wanted us to be there or not like i can't tell if he was just fed up or he was just like all right let's get this day started i suppose um how was the food you might be like the food was okay um I, I suppose we probably wouldn't have eaten anything at that point because as it turns out granada's is a surprisingly hilly city where we i can't remember we took like the bus in and then we were like at the top of a hill and we had to like walk down a hill but then to get to alhambra you had to like walk up another hill so there's a lot of hill walking around i can't say i'm a most physically fit person and the entire time i was there i was like i need to like go to the gym or something this is like i need like better cardiovascular health or something um but yeah sorry just like but my microphone stand into um, my monitor but uh what did i have i had i don't remember what my friend had but i'm trying to think they gave us starters and the starters was in like 90 percent of the places we went to like a bread roll and this place gave us like croquettes and chips i think i can't remember if those were actual starters or if it was we like they were like complimentary or we ordered them or something i genuinely don't remember anyway two of my friends they just had like a giant plate of calamari and like literally just calamari um because i remember they, they, this place didn't have an english menu so we we're using google translate and it was like they were trying to get calamari but they were just like trying to ask it it was like we don't want the chips or anything with it we just like want a plate of calamari is that something you can do because that was an option they had with squid but it wasn't like the calamari kind or something i don't i don't really remember but anyway they, they were nicely accommodating or whatever and, you know they got their calamari <laughs> how was the calamari okay it, i don't think it was most delicious calamari i ever had it was a little bit as i would it's not undercooked because it wasn't like raw or anything but like it could be more cooked you know it could be like a bit crispier about that, that sort of thing anyway i had uh, a tortilla with um hamon i assume in america hamon but I'm, I'm not particularly sure but it was basically just like a, a spanish tortilla which honestly i don't really know what the definition of spanish tortilla is but it's just kind of like an omelette to be honest anyway delicious perfect sort of like brunchesque food actually we have a receipt here maybe, maybe we can see what my friend ordered huevos con jamón that's what i had no no that's what my friend had i think eggs with eggs of ham and i had a tortilla jamón that sounds about right maybe my thing does look like a tortilla anyway that was a that was a bit of a nice lunch ring <laughs> like a hillside restaurant stop i say hillside it wasn't it's not like the steepest hill in the world, but um, it's sort of like, if you think of like European small towny things, that's like that sort of vibes it gives you. Despite that, I don't think Granada's particularly a small town. It's actually quite big, you know. <laughs> I don't know what the population is, but I imagine comparatively, it's definitely not a small town. It just, it has nice sort of, it's got nice vibes, I suppose. That little street. I say little, it's not little, because I mean, like, one of the things they had on that street, like, near the bottomish part of a hill, is this, they just had, like, this giant, like, mansion or something, like, some, some person's gardens or something just there. Anyway, uh, that was a very interesting meal. Like, I don't know if you're the sort of person to basically just have a meal of comprised of situ literally one thing how that appeals to you or not like how does that appeal to me i would say i'm very indifferent you know here i am talking about food again so not i mean it's just easy to talk about food because i always take pictures of food on holiday <laughs> um but <laughs> i do find it quite amusing my friends having just like literally just a big old plate of calamari like i do like calamari don't get me wrong would i order ever order a plate of calamari it's a weird thing where i'm like i don't think i would ever go to a restaurant and just order like a big quantity of one thing but I'm also not, like, against eating a big quantity of one thing. I think it's just sort of in my brain. I'm just, like, I, I should have, like, a variety of things. Like, a smorgasbord of things for, like, what I eat for a meal. Despite the fact I don't actually care all that much about what I eat. I don't... It's just sort of like a... If I don't care much about what I eat, I might as well just, like, order in a way which is... Seems most reasonable, I suppose, in that sense. Does that make sense? I guess it's sort of like a... You would have thought I don't care about what I eat, so I would just eat one thing over and over again in a meal but i guess it's sort of like a subconscious thing where i'm like i'm trying to get a balanced meal quote quote despite the fact that that's, that's not really how it works it's not like having fish and chips is marginally better than just having fish on its own i suppose um it just i don't know i don't, I don't really thought about this to be honest i guess because i don't care about what i eat i'm sort of encouraging myself to eat a load of different things because then i get to try a load of different things even if at the end of the day i'm not just like whoa this is this is what I want, you know. I guess I guess that's what it is. Because I don't care too much about what I eat. I don't have one thing which I'm like, yes, I want to eat this over and over and over again. Everything I'm very sort of indifferent on. So I'm, you know, 
<laughs> I just sort of have a bit of everything because I at least you know I, I still have taste buds and all that, and at least it tastes a bit more like visually interesting, you know. On the taste, essentially interesting. No, that's not really what what word do you use to things that that um, relate to taste? I don't really know. Anyway, chop wood, hit rocks, um, camera. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting restaurant. And by the time we were leaving, I think there was a lot more locals actually coming in to, um, I don't know, have midday drinks or something. I can't remember. Maybe it was a weekend, but I took these pictures on. Anyway, it was a nice little restaurant thing. I can't believe I'm taking taking this entire episode just to talk about it was like one restaurant. But not really much apparent reason, I'm going to be honest. Um, uh, someday I should look through like all the, the random photos I've taken, um, in Animal Crossing because we, we probably have loads to be perfectly honest I mean, my photo album is probably just like filled to a brim with just these random screenshots um I will, it's also filled to a brim with a lot of my like friends taking random screenshots when we're playing like Mario Kart or something <laughs> that's just how that's just how it goes uh but yeah like I don't know what else to really say to be honest the menus themselves are a little bit weird, you know? You ever go to a restaurant and you have, like, they have, like, these laminated menus? I don't know why, but subconsciously, in my brain, like, if you have a laminated menus, I'm like... My, my, for some reason, my level of distrust goes up. There's, there's, I don't think I have any logical explanation for it. I think I just have an association with, like, those sort of, like, laminated plastic menus of, like, tourist traps sort of um, restaurants. Um, but to be fair, the places we went to, which mostly did have laminated menus, they were all pretty good, I thought. I'm not going to say they're like Michelin star whatever or anything like that, but, but certainly, you know, the food was good and, you know, would I have it again? Yeah. Like, if I was at that, that first place in um, Barcelona we went to, recommended by the hotel staff, which just had, which also had laminated menus, I believe, but also just had most ridiculous portions. Anyway, I understand the need for laminated menus in a sense. Um, it's easy cleaning, isn't it? You know, being able to wipe it down, you know, spillages and whatnot. Um, but I, I don't know why, it's just sort of like a paper menu just, I guess it's because a paper menu is sort of like a, a flaunt of extravagance, isn't it? It's sort of like, oh, we don't need these, re we don't need to make these menus last or anything. If you, you know, destroy them, we can get them easily printed off because the cost of it doesn't even occur to us. Um, while the laminated menus are like, you know, we've been, we've been using the same menu for like 30 years and whatnot. And you can use it also as your like dinner mat. <laughs> Uh, I guess it's just that sort of like associations a bit on my mind, which is, I would say, grossly unfair to the restaurant itself, because really, if anything, a restaurant should be mainly judged on the food, and I, I guess in part it's also its cleanliness or presentation um, feel reasonable to judge yourself on as well. Anyway, plastic menus, it's just, it's just in my mind, right? Just, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. And I think, I think one big reason I think about the plastic menus in that sense is, um, we went on, uh, back when I was like, poof, like just graduating from secondary school, went with like quite a few friends, like 10 of us, um, around Europe for a little bit. And one of the first meals we had was, I think we were in Italy in, in Rome, in this sort of area, and we were going to Vatican City. No, maybe we we're just in Rome in general, trying to get a meal or whatever. And we just stopped off at a random restaurant because, you know, I don't remember why necessarily we stopped off at that restaurant. Oh, you're ill. Let's go get you some medicine. Um, and they had plastic menus and it was just. It was probably one of the worst restaurants I think we've been to, <laughs> I've ever been to. I thought the pizza was like passable, but pizza, I feel like, it, it's hard to get pizza particularly wrong, isn't it? As long as you've got like the actual ingredients there. It feels like as long as you, you know, cook it in the oven and, you know, it, it's at least moderately cooked. <laughs> Let him cook and all that. Um, it's fine. But I remember I had some like tagliatelle or tomato sauce. It was it was gross. It was it was a hundred percent like a sort of tourist trap, um, sort of restaurant. Or maybe it was like a, a front or something. You know, maybe it had like money laundering schemes. I don't really know to be particularly honest. But it was not great. And I think I just built up that association for plastic menus in there. Because now I think about it, I went to very fancy restaurants which also have like plastic esque menus. It's just they put them in like um, not a ring binder. What they called, like those folders you put, which are kind of like ring binders where you put a load of like paper in and what not I don't know what, what is that with my joy-con um but they're like sort of like got leather padded on the outside but not not actual leather because it's faux leather or whatever um yeah I've been to fancy restaurants which use that I guess you know the ease of cleaning and that sort of thing is just something which I 
assume is rather important especially in the restaurant industry when things are sort of like very fast paced you need people in and out like immediately as soon as they're done you need to be able to clean up in like three minutes that table and have them have it ready and prepared for the next waiting uh, customer because the longer they're waiting we're you know the less happy they're going to be and customer satisfaction goes down fewer people want to go whatever or, or i suppose if you reach a sort of like a peak popularity phase you, uh, peak popularity phase you would just go through reservations only i don't know i don't know um I don't really know where I was going with this either, but <laughs> plastic menus, I guess, is in la laminated menus, I guess, is in what this is going to be called. I'm trying to basically just think back to all the popular menus and like haunts I used to go to, um, to think about like what menus do they have. Like Nando's, it's not got a laminated menu. I guess that's a different. It's like, is it like a plastic sort of plastic e sort of menu? Or like, um, I don't know what it's called. Like, it's not like waxed paper, but paper which has like some degree of water resistance on it like a card with some sort of it's not plastic film because when, when it's actually just put through a laminate and you see like the plastic edges around the end like no one cares about this and obviously i genuinely don't actually care because i'm just i'm just trying to like spin a yarn here you know um it just it just gives me a really different vibe like you go into a restaurant they give you a menu if it's an a4 piece of paper which is laminated and you see the plastic on the side that's going to give you a very different vibe to the feeling of if it is the same sort of thing but it's like plastic wrapped but in a sense where it's like I don't know how to describe it. Like, if you've ever been to Nando's, where's my <laughs> Like, um, the card, which is, like, waterproof properties, probably. Um, we need to talk to Biscuit. Well, we don't need to, but we might as well for the mission. I'm only talking to you to increase my capital gain. Biscuit, I'll be seeing you now. <laughs> Not talking to you as a friend, of course. Um, we haven't found our craft of today, so we should probably do that before the episode ends. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to think, like, back in university... Actually, one of the places I went to a lot in university didn't even have, like, it just had, like, the chalkboard menu. It didn't have, um, like, a handout menu. Because I guess it was just, like, a place where you just, like, order and sit down and what and what have you. Um, McDonald's, of course, I mean, don't really have a menu. I mean, they do have a menu, but it's, like, they either have a, the paper menu on the side or you... Nowadays, who uses that? Who even uses a board above it? Everyone just uses the, the touch screens. Well, maybe not everyone, but I certainly do because they're just convenient. And honestly, I, I think it's like the perfect fit for fast food industry to have those like touch screens because it's just like, it's very efficient, I think, <laughs> doing things like that. And I, that's kind of what the fast food industry is kind of born out of, isn't it? Um, but what do I know? I don't really know much about like the service industry or anything. Never worked in it, to be honest. So, you know, everything I say is out of pure ignorance rather than um, a place of reasonable thought. Well, I mean, I, I, I try to put reasonable thought in, but <laughs> alas, my, my reasonable thought can only go so far. Um, from the knowledge I've accrued. Because I'll cook up a solution with the knowledge I've accrued. <laughs> um, but yeah, what, what was I going with? I don't know, I don't, genuinely don't know again. I'm trying to think. There's this like, like Japanese restaurant we always went to back in university. Did that have... Maybe that had laminated menus as well. Actually, I'm not really sure. I don't think I had paper menus. What that place did, I remember, is that you had to fill in like a paper form to order your food. Like a... You would, you would see all... No, I think it had, like, a booklet thing. I think it was one of the, the fancy ones, which had those, like, ring binder, but not ring binders. Leather... Leather... Maybe it's just folder? Manila... It's not, like, a manila folder, but... Faux leather folder. Of which to put all the, the menu items in. It was, like, a booklet, I suppose. And then you had, like, a little... Um, fill-in form, which you just gave to the waiter afterwards. Or the service staff afterwards to um, actually order your food. That's what I remember. Very convenient. And to bring it back around to ordering the same of a lot, of one type of food over and over again every time my friend went there she just ordered like six portions of salmon or whatever she it was just all salmon because to be fair the salmon was cheap and every time we went there and uh, we always went they had a deal going on where like if you went at like certain times everything was half price or certain things are half price and she would just order just like a boatload of salmon so you know <laughs> bring it full circle she likes salmon she ordered a lot of salmon why not do you have time because fauna's almost certainly our crafter so we might, well, I might as well pay you a visit. Might as well get your recipe. Be like, oh, we already know how to craft this. And then we'll round up this episode here. How about that? I, should, I did not expect to talk about laminated menus in um, today's episode. But I, like, I, I mean, it makes sense to have some sort of menus of waterproof resilience. Because you don't want to re be constantly printing out like new menus over and over and over again, right? Do you? Paper menus are, you know, drinks... All that sort of thing. There's a lot of food and water, I suppose, which is around the sort of area. And um, 
restaurants and just having to constantly reprint these paper menus is both both a waste of paper and you know pointless i suppose so you might as well get plastic ones laminate them make them you know easy to wipe down and that's it which begs the question why Wagamama still prints out these like giant menus which you kind of use as serving plates the entire time you would have probably really benefit from having like these laminated menus but what do i know <laughs> anyway i'm gonna round this episode off here so if you have been watching thank you very much it's been animal crossing new horizons i've been dear darling likes comments subscription shares greatly appreciated twitter discord down below hope to see you again bye for now so farewell so until next time bye bye for now <laughs>